Hello, my name is Marianne Michel and it's a pleasure for me to introduce you to the complex but fascinating world of gods in ancient Egypt. Here we will focus on two fundamental questions. How the world or even the universe came into being according to the ancient Egyptians and how the gods themselves came into being. How was the universe created? Today, we can cling to the Big Bang theory if we want, but in ancient times and in various cultures, people refer to stories or more precisely to myth. So, what about such creation myth in ancient Egypt? The problem is that many texts contain many stories of the mythical birth of the universe and gods, and there has never been a single unified Egyptian myth of creation. The major myths were associated with some specific places or different cult centers in the country. Actually, these different myths linked to different places should be seen as different aspects of a common underlying vision of how the world and its creator gods had come into being. Now, let's see how this worked out with respect to three, to, to three specific different places, three main cult centers. The first one was Hermopolis Magna, as it is known in Greek. Today, this place is now in Arabic, Hez el Ashmunein, and it's located in Middle Egypt. According to the Hermopolitan cult, there were eight primeval deities forming the Ogdoat. And these eight gods came in four pairs of male and female gods. These four pairs reflected the very basic idea that creation has to be with sexual intercourse and pregnancy, and as a result of this, birth. Each of these hermopolitan pairs was associated with specific aspects or elements of the pre-creation that are the elements that existed prior the creation of the world itself. In this sense, these four pairs were Nun and Nunet, the water, He and Huchet, the infinity, Hek and Huchet, the darkness, Amun and Hamunet, hiddenness. These original elements were believed to be without inherent power of their own, but nevertheless, they were thought to contain some kind of potential for creation. Incidentally, there are interesting similarities between these ancient Egyptian elements and those said to have existed before the creation has narrated in the biblical book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. But back in Egypt, the second major cult center was Memphis, as it is known in Greek. It is still a major tourist attraction located in a small town called Mitraina, not so far from Giza. In general, in ancient Egypt, the primeval god, who is the first of all gods who existed in time, was the god called Atum. We will see him again later on. But according to the Memphis view, all things were created by the god Ptah, the god of metal workers, craftsmen and architects. Ta is actually presented as a combination of male and female elements. Here the god Ta existed even before god Atum and created Atum himself. After that, Ta created the other gods and everything else, making it through his heart and through his tongue. So you can see the enormous importance that people of Memphis attached to their own god Ta. What we have here is a myth of creation ex nihilo, that is to say out of nothing, and brought about by means of rational thought and speech as expressed by his heart and his tongue. From a comparative perspective, again, it is interesting to note that this creation myth 
is actually the earliest known example of the Logos doctrine, as it is known later, in the theology of the Old Testament and the New Testament. One of the first verses of the Old Testament runs, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And in the New Testament, you can read, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and all things were made through him. But back in Egypt, the third important cult center was Heliopolis, or the city of the sun. This Greek name is still used today for a large district of Cairo, and the ancient Heliopolis was not located there, but next to it, in the present-day suburb of Einsheims at the northeast of Cairo. Here, in Heliopolis, the main city of solar worship, the myth of the creation was center of the primeval god Atum. Atum, as a principle of creation, can be associated with the sun, its light and heat, which is considered a necessary element in the birth of all life. However, the solar star itself is personified by the god Ra, who is better now. Atum and eight of his descendants together formed a group of nine deities, the Aeneid. The god Atum himself is called the ruler of the gods and the father of all. But in this cosmogony of Heliopolis, there is something else that already existed before Atum created everything. And this something else is water. This primeval water was called Nun. This does not mean that Nun is the creator god. No, we have seen already that the creator god was Atum. In fact, Nun can be described as a pool of energy, as a place of gestation in which Atum was immersed and inert, unconscious. Finally, Atum will be stimulated by the energy of Nun to become aware of his own existence. Now, how did Atum appear out of Nun? According to the Heliopolitan view, the first thing that emerged from Nun was a pyramid-shaped mound called the Bemben upon which Atum settled. Atum is said to have been born out of the primeval waters as he who came into being by himself. This depiction was probably inspired by the flooding of the river, the river Nile. Let me briefly explain this bit of Egyptian ecology. Before the building of the high dam of Haswan in the 20th century and for thousands of years, all agriculture in Egypt depended on only one annual flood of the Nile and its branches. This is why Egypt, up to the present day, is often called the gift of the Nile. So, once a year, its water would rise and flood the land. When the rising waters reach its highest level, it would start to recede. At this moment, you could see mounds of earth emerge from the water of the Nile, depicting quite the pyramid-shaped mount Ben Ben emerge from Nun. So, certain ancient Egyptian beliefs provide us another case of how ideas about the divine and supernatural are intimately linked to the natural world. In the next unit, we will go further by examining the next stages of the creation process according to this Heliopolitan cosmogony. <laughs>